Okay, welcome to part three of this tutorial about building restoration. What we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna add a marquee and some text on that marquee, some lighting so that it looks like it's shining onto the street. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get my rectangle tool and zoom way into this marquee to see what it's kind of made up of. You notice it's just a bunch of rectangles of different colors and some of them are broken broken and dirty so we're going to draw a rectangle it has that same blue from before which we'll change in a minute but let's go ahead and try to make it about the same size as one of those rectangles it won't be perfect because this is skewed but we'll fix that in a minute so we're going to make a pattern out of this before we do that let's go ahead and change the fill color if we accept our change in our properties menu, we can click on the fill color and come in here. And I think the marquee should be like a nice light yellow. So all I did was drag the hue slider down. And now we have a yellow. And uh, because each one of these blocks has a, a little black border around it, I think we'll do a stroke that is um, a little thicker like that. And maybe don't make it perfectly black. We'll kind of come up into this gray area. So now I have this piece here i'll move it over here so you can see so it's got a black stroke yellow fill and it doesn't really matter where it is what i need to do at this point is get my rectangular marquee tool and draw a selection so i have the stroke and the fill all included very careful selection once i have that selection i should be able to go to my edit menu and choose define pattern and that'll allow me to make a pattern out of this that i can fill the entire marquee with so define pattern I'll call it marquee. Get rid of my selection because I don't need it any longer. As a matter of fact, I don't need this rectangle any longer. I'll delete that later. So now what I want to do is I want to create a rectangle that's as big as the whole marquee. Zoom out a little bit. If you uh, need to resize the marquee uh, to make it so that the proportions are not constrained, you can hold down the shift key and just move it around. So once again, it's a little skewed, doesn't matter. We're gonna solve that in a minute. But what I need to do with this is I need to go to effects and this time I'm gonna choose pattern overlay. And you'll notice that uh, in my patterns, I have this pattern that I just created. I'll say, okay. And it's looking pretty good, but you can see like the corner is a little off. We're gonna use that vanishing point tool to fix this. So I've got this. Um, unfortunately, the vanishing point tool doesn't work really well when you have effects on a layer. So what we need to do is we need to change this layer in two ways. So we go to layer, rasterize, shape. So it'll just make a yellow shape. Now the effects also need to be rasterized. So we go to layer, rasterize, layer style. And now this is just a layer that has um, yellow rectangles all over it. So that's going to work pretty well for what we need to do. Now, the next thing we need to do is select this entire layer. Okay, this the layer we have is rectangle one, and it's just a small piece of this entire canvas. And if we do command A, you'll notice, maybe I'll click on that. Yeah, you'll notice that you've got a selection around the entire canvas that includes this layer that we have selected. And that's the important part is make a selection of the whole thing. And then we can do uh, command C or control C on a Mac, copy that whole thing. Now we're gonna make another layer on top of that, turn off that rectangle, get rid of the selection. And now that we're on this layer, we're going to vanishing point because the way that filter vanishing point works is it puts permanent pixels on, on the layer that you have selected. So that's why I need a brand new layer and I turn off the old layer. So vanishing point. And then uh, you'll see I have some old grids left over from before, but the way the vanishing point works is I'm gonna click on the different corners of the place where I wanna place my design. There's a zoom tool here if you wanted to zoom into the area. Okay, switch back to the, to the grid. I need to continue making this grid. Now I'm ready to paste my copied uh, marquee grid in there. So Command V or Control V, it came up into here. So now it's time to grab that and drag it onto 
the grid that I've made. And you'll notice it just changes slightly so that those grid lines follow where the, the angle of the marquee is. So that's looking pretty good. And while I'm here, I might as well make a grid around this marquee on the side and place another one in it. So I'm going to go back to my perspective to tool here, click on the four corners of this one over here on the other side, makes me a grid, paste. I get this back again because it's still copied, but in order to fit it in over here, watch what happens. Um, if I try to put it in there, it's just too big for it. Like it won't, it won't really go in there. See how, see how big those blocks are for the marquee. So what I have to do, let me undo, is I have to use this transform tool to make this super small to go into a much more small skewed area like that. Once I do that, I drag it on. You can see it looks more convincing. Honestly, it could be even smaller than that, but I'll leave that for now. So once I say, okay, what it does is it puts permanent pixels on this layer. You see that? It's great. Uh, in order to make this look real, the what would happen is if this was really lit up yellow like this on both sides, there would be some yellow light cast on the street. So a good trick for that, and let me name this layer Marquee. A good trick is to duplicate this layer. So control click on that if I want and um, the duplicate layer is here. Now I have the copy of that. What I can do is I can drag that down onto the street. I can choose edit, transform, flip vertical. And now they're sort of reflected on the street, but that would be sort of a, a wide light. So I can hold down command on my Mac or control on PC and grab a corner and you'll notice like it's just stretching it out like it's spreading out onto the street and I can do the same thing over here you see that so I just adjust that until I feel like the light is being cast out onto the street um, effectively that looks pretty good but of course it would be a lot more blurry and there'd be some blending mode that we choose so I think the blending mode I'll choose is soft light see that's looking pretty good but I also need to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and adjust my slider until, until that light looks right. I don't really want any definition there. I just want some light cast on the street and that's looking pretty good. So as you can see, I've got the light here. I've got the marquee there. So it, it really does look like it's casting light from this yellow marquee onto the street. Now there's before and after, and we're, we're getting a pretty realistic effect out of that. So now we just sort of repeat that process now with text. So what we want to do is we want to put some text on this marquee. So I'll come up here and click on my marquee copy, and then I'll click on the type tool. So I'll type right on my marquee and I'll just type in all caps now showing good, except it would be, let me set my change there. I like to get my move tool because when you do that, then it gives you all these choices over here. I'm going to have some some red text. That's usually what people put up on marquees now showing so that's looking better. I can ex make the size of my text much larger. I can change some other properties like this. It's called the kerning and I can make the letters farther apart. I can also drag on that. There we go. So now now showing is kind of stretching across the whole thing. It's not perfect. We're going to have to use our vanishing point tool again, but I'll get it kind of like right down there on one of those lines. Think about how these really work. People go and they put these letters on the on the sign and it would have to be run on one of those lines. So that's good. And um, what's showing? How about Spider-Man No Way Home? Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, of course, that's too large, but I'll get my move tool again, come to my properties panel, reduce the size of the text, maybe set my kerning back to zero. Move this around, still a little smaller. This looks like it'll fit. Once again, I just try to get it right in there so it fits on those lines. And uh, once I get it into my vanishing point, it's gonna look a lot better. Actually, let me bring the note now showing down. Yeah, that looks better. So honestly, looks great right there, right? Um, but what we need to do is add um, that perspective, all right? So I want to go ahead and select both of these layers and go to layer, 
rasterize layers and what it'll do is it'll take it from type to something that's permanent i also want to combine these layers together so i can go to layer merge layers and it'll just merge the two layers that were together so now it's just one layer and once again i do a command a or control a on a pc and you'll notice it's made a selection around the whole thing copy get rid of my selection add a new layer and turn off this layer when i go into filter and vanishing point my grids are already here i paste and i get the, the text i drag it on there and it will just perfectly skew to the angle of that box i paste again and I remember I need to make this super small if I want to make it fit in that one. So I'm going to get my transform tool and I'm, I'm saying this has got to be like almost unreadably small over here. I drag it onto the marquee and it's still too big. I just undo, make it even smaller and drag it. It looks like it almost fits over there. But you can't read it anyway, not concerned. So now that I've got that over there, it looks like I've got the marquee on both of the, I got the text on both of the marquees. Um, what would make this look more realistic? Effects, bevel and boss. And I want to do like an inner bevel, chisel hard. Uh, I can go through these different these different gloss contours to find the, the one that I like that's really going to work well for this text. You know, I want to find one that looks like it's just really some, some text on the sign. This looks pretty good. It's got some shininess and stuff like that. I can choose how I want the depth, if I want it to look deeper, if I want the, the size of the emboss to change. Okay, so there's lots of lots of properties to change. Um, that's looking pretty good. The other thing I probably will add to this is um, some sort of outer glow, which is going to be that same color of red. It's just going to glow a little bit, but it needs to be in a much lighter red. And uh, change the size. Maybe instead of lighten, we'll just go normal. Let's see how that's looking. See how it's got a little red glow around it now. That's pretty good. Maybe also a drop shadow. And, um, you know, like a deep red dark. Drop shadow would be good. So we don't want it to be black. You know, it's got to be kind of casting light off of these letters. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's see if we change the distance. We don't want it to be too far away. We don't want the size to be too strong. We want it to be nice and sharp. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Maybe one more thing I'll do is add a stroke. A stroke is just an outline. So it's an outside stroke, a nice dark, dark red, and maybe a little bigger. So we can really see the outline of those letters against there. See, that's looking really nice. Okay, so what that did is it affected the whole layer. It even changed this side, which doesn't look great because it's so skewed on the side. So if I had to do it again, I'd probably just do it two separate layers so I can affect them differently. But now it really looks like um, those letters are on there. I can even take the marquee text and nudge it a little bit. So it's not on the side. So, of course, now we have red mixed in there. We can do that same trick we did before, where we take our marquee tool. We can duplicate that layer, right? We can we can rasterize the style. That we can drag it down here onto the street, edit, transform, flip vertical, just like we did before except now we are going to really blur out that we're going to skew the text by holding down command or control and getting that to kind of lay out onto the street as if it was shining out there. It's not terrible and blur it filter blur Gaussian blur and give it. Yeah. See, it's, it's casting some red in there and maybe even softer than that. So, you can see that there's some red and yellow shining down onto our street, which start, starts to make that marquee look real because it's casting light onto our street. So 
Now what I'm going to do is sort of a, a speed run of the rest of what I'm going to do on this. It would be a very long video tutorial if I showed you how to make these windows and then make the sign work in the same way. So I'll just speed up the rest of the video tutorial for your benefit. You can kind of get an idea of how I'm going to go about this. Enjoy.